Hi everyone, uh, it's great to see you here. I'm Yan, uh, and I'm going to present our project, Private Eye, uh, which is about characterizing the limits of information leakage uh, from your eyeglass reflections in video conferencing. So I'd like to start with a simple question. How many of you in this room have ever like used any of these video conferencing apps? Could you raise your hand? <laughs> Yeah, I would really be surprised if, you know. Um, so that's kind of expected because uh, we all know the COVID-19 situation. And I'm pretty sure you also noticed the trend of video conferencing kind of continued even after the COVID pandemic because people start to enjoy a mixture of the virtual and in-person meetings. And meanwhile, I'm noticing many of you are wearing eyeglasses and you know eyeglasses can reflect light and can reveal some very important information like your locations and the people around you. Right? So I'm pretty sure everybody in this room has thought about this problem and hypothesized that your eyeglasses can leak information. And here, finally, we measured it. And the research question we investigate here is not whether the eyeglass reflection can leak information, but instead how much information it can leak. And in this work, we focused on a very specific type of information leakage from eyeglass reflections, that is the information displayed on your screen uh, during these video conferences. And we seek to understand the limits of such information leakage. So basically, uh, we consider scenarios where the victim and the adversaries are both participants of video conferences. And we call this type of attack webcam peeking attack because the adversary is assumed to do not have any control over the victim webcam, but they can use the victim's webcam to peek on themselves. Um, Besides the possible existence of this webcam peeping, peeking attack, we also had some pretty interesting observations. For example, over the past decade, the camera hardware actually evolved a lot in terms of its resolution. Um, as I'm showing here, with present-day cameras, like commonly 720p with the um, laptop built-in camera and the very common external camera that's 1080p, you get some information. And it's also predictable that in the near future, we will be evolving into 4K cameras. Actually, there are some YouTubers who are already using such 4K cameras for streaming. And as you can see, the information leakage is increasing uh, as the camera hardware increases. So in my talk, I will explain how much uh, information leakage the present, uh, present day cameras can leak. And uh, our model will uh, be used to predict how much information will be leaked in future webcams. And so besides the better camera hardware, we also had some other observations that there are some emergent computational tools that could potentially help the adversaries to get more information from the reflections. For example, I'm showing eight consecutive video frames here captured by the video camera. And Potentially, you can do a simple image registration and use existing techniques of multi-frame super resolution to strategically combine these frames to reconstruct a higher quality image that is more recognizable and gives the adversary more information. And finally, uh, our observation is that there are many factors that could affect the reflection quality. These include the software factors, for example, what's the zoom ratio uh, of your operating system as well as your browser, things like that, and some environmental factors like the lighting in the room, and some eyeglass related factors like uh, the curvature of the, light, uh, uh, the glass and what's the distance between your glass and the screen, right? So there are a lot of factors. So, Another thing I want to mention is that um, you know sometimes as participants we can get lucky and get a set of such factors that could reduce the type, the like amount of information leakage, but sometimes we could also get unlucky. So the question here is, can we possibly control these factors in order to reduce the amount of informa information leakage here by building a model? So our work aims to model and predict the limits of such information leakage with present day and future webcams, and we investigate how to mitigate such webcam picking attacks. And specifically, in this work, we mainly used human-based recognition, such as Amazon MTurk workers, to recognize the reflected texts, and we used existing multi-frame super-resolution techniques to enhance the reflection quality. 
And we did, we did experiments both in controlled lab settings as well as some user-selected uncontrolled settings. And we mainly focused on textual targets in web scenarios, meaning the text displayed on the websites. And we also did a bit on directly recognizing the websites for our browsing, which we'll, I will talk about soon. Okay, so the question we care about the most is probably how serious this problem really is and should, uh, should I worry about it right now? So in order to answer, answer that question and explore the textual recognition, recognition limits, uh, we did experiments with 20 users and built mathematical models that quantify this information leakage process. And we found that with uh, present day existing webcams, it is possible, it is feasible to pick on some text on some big font websites. These actually include some pretty popular websites like the twitch.tv I'm showing here. And these texts uh, roughly correspond to a point size of 56 points and a physical height of 10 millimeters displayed on your screen. And our model shows that um, with future 4K camera, you can actually be able to pick most HTML headers on the websites. Uh, and uh, as you can clearly see, it's actually quite challenging for adversaries um, to use like present day cameras or even future cameras to pick on header texts or even body text of the websites. And we then looked at another probably easier task for the adversary. For example, can you directly recognize the websites they're browsing by looking at the layouts and the shapes of the websites that are reflected? As we're showing here, um, these websites actually have pretty unique layouts. For example, the bing.com I'm showing here, and you can see an uh, example picture of the reflection. So we found out that on an Alexa top 100 data set, it is possible to achieve over 90% accuracy to recognize these websites are browsing even with present day webcams. Um, so, you know, the information leakage of the website you are browsing or even the applications you are using during video conferences might be a more pressing matter for users in even present days. And as I mentioned, there are a tons of factors and we managed to characterize them into two characteristics. Uh, the first one is those that would mainly affect the reflection pixel size the adversaries get in the digital image space. And these include such as like the distance between the glass and the screen, camera resolution, et cetera. We provide a fully quantitative model that could help you calculate what the reflection pixel size would be if you know these factors. And uh, another category is the ones that would affect the signal to noise ratio of the reflected light. For example, the lighting in the room could affect it. And we did a qualitative analysis in our paper. And due to the time limit, I would refer you to our paper for a more comprehensive analysis of how these factors could affect the reflection quality. I do want to point out there are some interesting factors. For example, we find out the lighting condition in the room could affect the reflection quality non-monotonically. As I'm showing here, when the uh, light intensity in the room increases, your reflections can get clearer at first and then decreases in quality. And this is because of the auto exposure controls implemented in most of the modern webcams. And another interesting finding is that stronger prescription classes uh, sometimes leak more information because these stronger prescription glasses have flatter surfaces and would lead to larger uh, pixel resolution uh, captured by the webcam. So this is kind of bad news for people like me. And so finally, we seek to um, explore some possible mitigations of this method, of, of this problem. And uh, the most important thing I want to point out is that during our uh, experiments, we observed there are many factors in very diverse uh, environments. And it's extremely difficult to completely model and predict the threats you are facing. For example, even with the same set of eyeglasses and cameras, you could have very different levels of reflections in different rooms because of the different lighting condition. So we were thinking, hey, wouldn't it be nice for, um, for example, the video conferencing platform to provide the users with a tool that we can assess the level, like the threat we're facing, you know, right now in each session. So we kind of proposed an individual reflection testing procedure that could potentially be provided by service providers like Zoom, um, which could be, for example, initiated by the user if they think it's needed uh, at the beginning of each session. So basically, simply, um, the platform could generate, generate some test patterns like texts and then capture the video 
uh, and get the reflections and compare it with the test pattern. And using a similar methodology as in our paper, you can do risk assessment and notify the user of the possible information leakage you're facing. And for example, if it detects header-sized um, text could be susceptible, it could let the users to decide if they want to ignore the threat or protect. So in terms of protection, although there are no existing um, dedicated protections for this problem in these uh, video conferencing platforms, we found out it's actually pretty easy. Just take some Python knowledge to set up an easy tool that could take in the video stream from your camera hardware, um, do some eyeglass filtering, basically it locates the eyeglass area and blur uh, the area, and even with adjustable length or strengths, and then uh, feeding the modified video stream to the video conferencing platform. So we're providing a very simple prototype we build on this GitHub repo you can check out. And finally, um, we categorize this webcam picking attack into a broad category of oversensing attack. Uh, basically, oversensing means that our sensors, including cameras, are getting over cap or overly capable, they are extra, uh, capturing more information than what the, hu what the user, uh, users actually understand, and then what is really needed in order to achieve a function. For example, have a, like a face-to-face uh, -face communication. So we suggest, use, uh, we just, uh, suggest using a principle of least pixels, which is in analogy to the principle of least privilege in OS uh, access control. Basically, the uh, service providers could allow the users to enter with the lowest resolution by default and allow the users to grant access to higher uh, capability to the sensors uh, increasingly, right? Okay, just to summarize, uh, the main two takeaways here is first, webcam picking, uh, picking attacks are kind of increasing uh, the risks with uh, more capable camera hardware as well as more emerging computational tools. And uh, it is actually important to explore more um, mitigations in the design space. Thank you. Very nice talk. I especially uh, like your idea to mitigate uh, this type of attack. So, can you give us more details about how to evaluate this attack? You showed with current uh, cameras, you can achieve around 13% accuracy. The how to define this accuracy, and also when you evaluate this uh, attack, what kind of information are displayed uh, on the screen? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. So, I think. Uh, this paper, it's not so technical. It can be regarded as an like assessment uh, paper. So uh, the methodology to assess it is indeed uh, very important. Um, so in this paper, we did two types of um, assessment. One is in controlled lab settings. We did single letters. Um, a, B, C, D, something like that, and did like single letter recognition. But the results I'm showing here are from the user studies, uh, where we generated some HTML texts of given different given sizes, uh, and counted the like the word uh, word error rate, word correction rate, something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, fascinating work. Uh, I was wondering, um, for future work, could you think about extending this to not the glasses, but like the reflection in the eye itself? So think about like if the cameras increase to 8K, could you elaborate on that? Yes, indeed. I think there are, uh, that's a very interesting technical question. There are two different directions. The first one is to look at the eyes, but the eyes have a really small curvature. Uh, it probably uh, requires your um, camera to have a super high resolution. We actually provide a model that you can use to calculate what's the required resolution you need for your um, camera to eavesdrop on a certain size of text. That's one um, possible direction. Another direction, I, personally, I think is very interesting, is to explore the idea of single pixel imaging. Um, so you, actually, you can just look at the light reflected by your face, something like that. and. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept, but uh, basically sim single pixel imaging is to trade off the processing time with the resolution you have. So for example, if you have light reflected off your face, you don't have much resolution. Mm -hmm. But the adversary can potentially modulate the light of your screen, and then, you know, something like that, right? Oh, you're, you're doing like a video conferencing session, they can change their screen contents when they're sharing their screen. Basically like they're the presenter and detecting you. <laughs> yeah, 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 something like that. So I think there's are, uh, these two possible directions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, amazing. Hi, nice work. Um, 
Where did you measure this text size? Maybe I missed it, the 10 millimeters and three millimeters. Is this on the, on the screen or on the glasses? Oh, 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 yeah, thank you for the question. I probably missed it. It's the display size on the screen, uh, physical size. We measured it with a ruler. And I do want to point out that people are more used to the point size, right, in the software space. But wh what we find out is that uh, the point size is not uh, universal across all devices. Different devices, different software could render it into different physical sizes. Uh, so the physical size actually provides a more universal comparison baseline here. Yeah, I was just wondering because three millimeters is already quite small. I don't know if most HTML editors are probably 10 millimeters, so. Yeah, yeah, with present day cameras, exactly, yeah. Great work. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have one final question. So, uh, uh, according to my understanding, you ask um, people to uh, recognize the um, text um, that you captured uh, by, um, through yeah. the With webcam. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought of using kind of machine learning algorithms to try to restore the images or try to recognize the text? Th that's a great question. Uh, so I would say our work is kind of providing a lower bound of this problem by using human recognition. Machine learning is definitely going to help. Uh, but the problem with machine learning is that it's very difficult to make it generalizable. How, how do you evaluate it with different environments? It's like, actually, there's a lot of bias if you do machine learning. So like as a baby step for the first work, we cannot use the human-based recognition here. But machine learning is definitely can be used for this problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's thank the speaker again.